and welcome to the first episode of Team Races to Places, the Africa Eco Race 2020. Now, there's been a little bit of video release before now. Obviously, there's been the announcement of the plans and what I'm doing, uh, the announcement of the team, the riders, the five riders that will take part in the event, uh, including myself. And then there was uh, some information about rider changes with Yuji no longer able to make it. I'm pleased to announce that Yuji is doing well and he's actually back riding a bike again which is great. All the best Yuji and we hope that you'll come racing with us in the future. And then there was the video releasing the news about the support team and the people that will be coming along to support the riders in the vehicles, support vehicles and the media team and the media crew that are coming along. But this is the first episode, this is where we're really going to get into the planning and the preparation and all the things that have to take part before we even get to the start of the race. Now we're hoping to do two or three episodes, maybe even four, before we actually get into the daily episodes of the race. They will be 20 minutes, but this is the first episode of Team Races to Places and this is all going to be about the preparation of the bikes and the support vehicles here in the UK before we leave to head out to the Africa Eco Race 2020. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, let's get straight on with building some bikes. So here we are in my garage workshop today and uh, this is the bike that I've been training on so you might have seen some new bikes at EICMA and uh, four riders on the team have got new bikes but the bike that I'll be using is this bike uh, one of the reasons for that is so I can strip it down, rebuild it and share it with you so uh, this, is, uh, this one is a 2019 bike uh, that I will fully rebuild from the frame up uh, ready for the Africa Eco race and uh, I'm going to do it also with my mechanic, Tim, who's going to help me uh, and then he's fully familiar with everything, how I like it on the bike and uh, that way every night when I, or every morning when I get my bike it should be exactly how I want it. So that's the plan. Uh, this is the bike, as you see, it's just about to get stripped down and uh, well, in a couple of hours it'll be down to the frame and we'll inspect the frame, get it painted, and then fully rebuild it, service every component, all the electrics, everything, check everything, and it should be good as new when it's done. frame ready for painting. Next time this comes back it's gonna be white. And I'm gonna take you into my father's little workshop uh, because he's doing some modifications on the chassis of my bike so let's go check it out. What's going on? We're just discussing, we're just... Look, this is, uh, so this is the chassis from my 2019 bike, which is a training bike. And um, it's going to change colour, it's going to be white, so it's just having a little bit of modification by uh, Senior Poskit. Look, you see your support in the uh, CTI sponsorship there. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you got your knee braces on Look, for? Have you got your knee braces on for welding? For welding. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just uh, sat here in the Leeds Nuffield Hospital and I'm waiting to get an exercise tolerance ECG. Now, as in order to race international cross-country racing, you need an exercise tolerance ECG doing, which is a heart test under stress, so on a treadmill, in order to verify that your heart is functioning properly. So they take the results, take you up to maximum heart rate, check the results at different levels and then calming down uh, to make sure that there's no abnormalities with the functioning of your heart before you go tearing across the middle of the desert 
and have a heart issue in the middle of the desert. So um, it's a precautionary thing. All the licensing authorities all around the world mandate it for international cross-country racing or if you're over 50 years old. So for me it's international cross-country racing since I'm only 40. Um, but I'm here at the field today to get my heart test done. So it's an exercise tolerance ECG. I've had a few before because I've raced the Dakar and had international licenses before. Um, but it's due before the Africa Eco Race in January, so I'm going to get it done now. That's what I'm doing. So this is what the heart test is like. You have to run on a treadmill. We're up to 14 minutes. Yeah, heart rate is over 90%. Getting there. Going up to 100. Woo! <laughs> So that's it, up to maximum, <laughs> job done. So that's that, exercise ECG done for another three years. Oh, time to go get back on uh, building some bikes. Here we are in the workshop and uh, just sat around all this stuff, you know, uh, trying to, we've just got everything out that we need to take with us to try and look at the amount of stuff we need to get in the support vehicles to support five riders and the support team as well. I mean, we've got awnings, bike stands, wheels and tyres, mooses, spare parts, bodywork exhaust, spare engines, boxes full of stuff, all the lubricants, engine oil, uh, chain loop, brake cleaner, all the things that we need to run the team. We've got spare parts boxes everywhere and uh, we're just trying to get a handle on everything that we need and get everything into the vehicles uh, in a way that we can access it when we need it. We know where everything is, uh, but it's a lot of work. Uh, I never imagined the amount of work to get this organised and it really has been a big job, but we're getting there. We started to get everything together, we can see what we've got and slowly, systematically, we're getting it into the vehicles so that everybody can find it when they need it. So that's what we're doing here in the workshop. Now it's going to take a few weeks, we're now four weeks from race start, or four weeks from heading to the start of the race and we are trying to get ahead of the game because there's Christmas and New Year between now and then. So hopefully we can get ahead of the game, get everything organised, know that we can fit everything in and get to the start of the race. Yeah, non-stop here. So, this frame, frame build starts here and Go on Tim, Tim's just uh, putting new bearings in there. There's nothing like a freshly greased bearing, is there Tim? Perfect. <laughs> Look at that, new frame, engine there waiting. Let's all go here. So I figured uh, I'd just say a few words because today's been a full on day building Stan bike. This name of the bike is Stan. Um, or Stan number one, or Yorkshire Stan as we're going to call it. Um, but I'm here with Tim and Tim is uh, Tim's going to be my mechanic at the race, at the Africa Eco race. And it's uh, a bit different for me from Malimoto to take a mechanic, but I wanted to give myself more time to focus on the media and get in the most out of the race from a media point of view and obviously with having four other riders and a team of five we need spare parts we need service vehicles and we need a team so and 
We chose the team based around people's history and experience and uh, Tim got the unfortunate job of being my mechanic. How do you feel he about that? Ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> so every day he has to deal with me telling me how he's done something wrong or not done it how I would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> or vice versa. Or vice versa. So, um, but yeah, today just spending the day in the workshop another day because it's been a few days. A few days. Um, and weekend, another weekend. day. Uh, which I'm really pleased about because Tim, like myself, really wants to know every little detail about the bike, like everything. So he wants to do it himself, he wants to build the bike himself so that he understands it absolutely inside out, which is exactly how I work. You guys know that building bikes for Dakar 17 and 18, I did it all myself because I was the one that was going to be working on the bike. So same principle here, Tim's building this bike with me pointing the odd thing out here and there and talking backwards and forwards about how to do things. He has better ideas at some things, I have different ways of doing others, it's, we just work together. Um, but it seems to be coming together, yeah? So Absolutely, I, yeah, going think, well. Working together well and uh, bike's already as you can see. Uh, we've got all the wiring loom in today and uh, cooling system, engine, frame, everything together tomorrow. Suspension, start to put finishing touches on really, hand controls, nav tower, all that sort of stuff. and. Uh, Hopefully in a day or two we'll be getting on top of it. So it's a lot of work. This is just yeah, this is just one bike and there's another four identical and you know with building those and getting all the navigation wiring done it's a lot of work. So yeah, without Tim's help it'd be a mission. And not just Tim, like there's Mike who works with me, uh, helping with other bits and my dad as well who's preparing the service vehicles, so there's a lot of people involved to pull it off so but hopefully we'll be able to make a great story from it. Right, better go get some supper and get to bed. <laughs> Cheers Tim. Morning. 5.30 in the morning. Time to go to the gym. Jim Dog. Jim Dog. Hello, Jim Dog. That's a good boy. Good boy, aren't you? Jim's over. Time to go get some work done. Some bikes to finish. Support vehicles to build. Lots of work to do. Let's go. So, um, just gonna this morning talk about fuel pumps, these things. So, when we're in the middle of the desert, obviously it's really important that we've got a reliable one of these, especially on a fuel injected bike. So, the bikes that have been rebuilt for the race, like my race bike that's been rebuilt from a bike that's been raced and practiced on, uh, we wanna make sure we've got a reliable fuel pump. So, I'm replacing both fuel pumps. Uh, and then what I will do is I'll replace the filters inside the fuel, the fuel pumps that come off and take those as spares. So that's what we're doing this morning, changing fuel pumps. Okay, so whew, I'm just in here, uh, actually at my parents' house, in my bedroom. Uh, my old bedroom at my parents' house. Uh, uh, what am I doing? Sorting stuff out. 
because I'm a good team manager for my guys and I'm sorting out all the safety equipment that you need to carry on the bike and first aid kit for them all so they've all got everything they need without having to sort it all out themselves it's a lot of work check this out it's a lot of stuff so got all sorts of stuff creams sun creams lip balm emergency mirror clips beacon flashing light leathermans earplugs pens maps emodium emodium ibcam there's the maps safety light sticks look at that light sticks in case they get stuck out in the desert yeah and obviously an enjoy stand linden organizer for everything to go in so just getting all of this stuff ready just another one of those jobs that needs to be done it's a lot we've got map of the area all the safety requirements head torch foil blanket mirror everything else you need in there lighter then in here we've got all the pills and first aid required all in this side and then we've got light stick flare goes in there um, eye lotion uh, eye, eye wash all of these uh, bags here and there they are all packed away into this handy size medical medical first aid and safety materials package boom five five riders ready to go Wow!